And this one Punisher is number three. Punisher number three. Kick it Jason ass. Aaron. Yeah. I love that he wears a captain. Paul Lasakita. Halloween. Well, who's mask. the other? Uh, Jesus Zayas. Ha- Jesus Saez and uh, Paul Lasakita. Lasakita. You, know, you made it into a, a jingle last time. I did. Paul Lasakita. Paul Lasakita. So number three. That's a great name. The Punisher. I number hope three. I'm pronouncing it right. And. I think Stuart. Hey, yeah. Man. What if we're totally fucking butchering it? <laughs> it's, it's actually Oxazitwa. And like, oh, fuck me. Oopsie poopsies. Okay. Uh, color artist is Dave Stewart, and we should mention that because he's on the cover of every issue. And Oof. honestly, the it's coloring fuck, is pretty fucking great. This whole first like thing where they're just like oh. bombing. So dudes yeah, the and... book opens up with Punisher leading the hand, just fighting fucking Hydra. agents of Hydra. Just a bunch of Hydra dupes. Bunch of hydro. Where's cooks. Bob? Um, oh, dude! It, oh, so he grabs. He grabs. Oh, one dude, of the dudes. Dude, bu- dude, yeah. yeah. So they're shooting yeah. him with the fucking Hulk gun. So cannon, there's these yeah. green fucking it energy blasts. Disintegrates people. Disintegrates a guy, and it's a ch- sharp piece, and it of happens a bu- right like a femur right next to his him. bone. Yeah, his fucking femur. Hang. Uh, Frank catches it and stabs the dude in the face with it. I'm like, what the hell is this book, dude? It's incredible. <laughs> Talk about great writers, Aaron, Jason Aaron. Jason Aaron, man. He, and, d- the Again, having from the second issue to this issue, I don't know. Is, is the priestess that is that narration throughout the whole story? The uh, the her being like the narrator. Yes. So um, from that being issue two on, of uh, from that perspective, I think continues to just make this story that much better. So let's... because it because again it continues to pull away at that character and be like. This is what this is why you should not idolize Frank Castle. Yes. Well, here's a great part is that when they get back from that, they've retained a guy and he oh my is gosh, dude. he is uh he's not trying to get information from him. He's just torturing him. Yes. For fun. He's kill to make a point. Right. And and it's not like anything. So then we I, I, I want to skip past what's in the middle there really quick because I want to get to a point. Um, You're just okay. jumping around the book. Well, because the middle part is really... I want to get... Yeah. Dep- de- okay, and you never told a single soul about that day. Now that you finally embraced your, embraced your true destiny, there's a priest just talking to him while he's just cutting this dude up who's just helpless. Just constantly screaming in pain while yeah. he's just casually <laughs> having and, a conversation. You know, I, tell me, how many more have you killed since that day in Queens? And he goes, not enough. And she goes, Frank Castle, you are too beautiful for words. Again, this is continuing to show you that he's beauty. not he's always been an anti hero. He's, he's a never fucking psycho. He's a psychopath. Yes. He's enjoying he murdering is, this man. He is why in the he, slowest way possible. Frank Castle is an extreme example of why Batman doesn't kill because you cannot have Once Batman you get a taste for it. Uh, Batman can't be a superhero if he's torturing people like that. I I have some weird feelings about Batman's interrogations and shit like that sure. with how far you want to go with that violence, but like, there's a reason why Punisher is an anti-hero and should not be looked at like that. And this book continues to to show you that yeah, Frank is crazy. Frank is a as a kid was as a kid went through some serious trauma and never got the proper environment to really get out of it. So he learned he he, he didn't get the help he, he needed and he became the punisher. He witnesses a double murder on the streets oh, in front which, of his house. Look, nobody does anything. Look at like look at how like that that different art style and how much grittier and sadder yes, that is. Yes. Because this book does we've talked about it many times with this book. Every, that's been a running thing of like the the duality of the violence where at the beginning of the book when he's killing Hydra, who are Nazis, it's enjoyable, it's fun. But then when we talk about something like real, serious, domestic yeah. murder, like violence and murder, and nobody doing anything about it because that's just what it was in that in that in that world, like in that environment, and that in Queens, like that's fucked up, dude. Like it's it's such a beautiful duality of the story, you know, where on one hand it's like how entertaining violence can be on the page and then but also so tragic and sad and real. Yeah. In the same story. It's kind of impressive. Yeah. And you know it shows you how good of a writer Jason really is. Wow. Um yeah, so he Like I know him. Yeah, me and Jason talk. Well, um so he witnesses this mur- double murder and it's by a mafia guy and he 
he talks about like he's the only one who can who still hears the screams. His parents tell him to forget it, but he can't. And he just says, you know, he's the only one who could still hear the screaming, and he's the only one who can make it stop. So he comes up with a plan, and he makes himself some napalm. Yeah. And he catches the guy walking out of his thing and dumps it on him. And he's wearing a Captain America Halloween mask, which I think is just awesome, because the cover is him as a little kid wearing the mask the in the throne, throne of, of the, the fist hand. of the yeah. beast or yeah. whatever. And... Um, God, this book Lu- is so damn good, Lucilla man. and Martinus Gianelli. I don't want to hear their screams no more. I just want to hear yours. And he fucking sets them on fire with a can of hairspray and just, a lighter. Just fucking... And, yeah. Everyone and, then, except- and that moment, that shot, you that splash that page. Part? Oh, my God. The smoke making the skull. Holy shit, man. And it's such a beautiful shot because that is the end of... That is his innocence. It's gone. And then it goes back to and him being such, a fucking and psycho. The, and then the smoke of that to make that skull to really drive home. Like, this is when the Punisher was really born. He wasn't born when his wife was killed and his family was killed. He was, he was always a killer. before that. And you know what? God, it, it becomes, so good. It becomes more... Um, and it just continues it to mythologize more, him. And, more, and Can I see the last page real quick? I just want to remember. Because I remember where it ends. Okay, I thought so. Right? Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, so we get back to the present day or whatever, and he's, you know, priestess is being all like, oh, you're amazing, whatever. And then his wife starts freaking out, right? Yeah. Because she's, like, not happy, and she doesn't understand what's going on, and why are we still in the park? And yeah. priestess comes up and gives her a dose and stuff. And She's like, where are you, the kids? You learn at the end that, yeah, where are the kids? And I want you to remember from issue one, when they start off, and it's from Frank's perspective, Just as after artwork. he got look killed, how sad and crazy, and oh. and she's gorgeous, like yeah, but it's beautiful also, art, beautiful art, right? Um, but also, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it, you can it, you can imagine it's a real human or a real person, whatever. Um, but in the very first issue, they talk about the other people, like the EMTs, are talking above Frank's screaming, and they said these are the only two. The two kids were cut to pieces. Okay, and I told you to remember that. Yeah. Okay. Now the final page is him standing in front of these two empty coffins, in front yeah. of the beast, right? Yeah. And why? Because why they still haven't revealed why the kids aren't still aren't back yet. Yeah. Why aren't they back yet? Put them in the goddamn sleeve. <laughs> Slid it, slide it in there. <laughs> yeah. I, um. It's... And it will it will be revealed soon enough why they haven't got brought the kids back, but, um. The point is, is that everything comes with a price. You've heard the monkey paw story, you yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah and and, uh, and you know, all of those stories. There's a price for what you get with that magic or whatever. And he got something from dark magic, but there's a price he's got to pay, and he does have to sacrifice something. And by the end of this story, which we'll I, see I how love, much he has to sacrifice I know, eventually. I, I know. <sighs> Or yeah. if he's willing to sacrifice. Well, I love that everything. he's on a collision course with Ares because I love the idea of being like. It's almost it's it's just like having the inclusion of the God of War and then using all this magic. Oh, and there's a part where they show the Ares just tearing the fucking shit tearing, out of a he bunch said, of hands. I thought he was sending me a war. This is yeah. an insult, and he just like rips through all these guys. Just yeah, like and, nothing like paper. And you're like. Yikes. So what it seems to be, and I don't know if it's going that way. It probably isn't. You would know because you've actually read it. But, uh, I feel like it's setting up the mythologizing and making him like the new god of war kind of thing and, uh, in some way. And I know it like it, tur- it, it myth- turns him into a god. I'm, I'm, I know that. I'll but. say this about the story. Where we're at, we've just finished the third issue. Um, where we're at, it looks a lot like... if Now, if I remember correctly, I think this might be... There is a point where the King of Killers, or whatever the story is called, the King of Killers, book one, chapter... There is a point where book one ends. Yeah. Okay? So just, that's all I'm going to say. I'm assuming it would be the sixth issue, because will, it's a 12-issue series. I will say that, th- that there's a point where the book wa- where book one ends, and I will say that book one focuses on Punisher and Ares. That's all I'm going to tell you. Yeah. Other than that, we have to wait to see. Ooh. It's it's it goes places that I never thought a Punisher book could go or would go. Yeah. And with with unfucking flinching dude, the 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 whole, you know, I read these books before I bring them to you. So I read them a yeah. week before and I've already read them before, whatever. But dude, I remember reading that part where he's just slicing this dude up for fun. 
face. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't look like he's having fun, but you know what I mean? There's nothing on his face, which makes it even worse. Right. And you're just it shows like, you more and more how much of a sociopath fuck? he is. Right. And I remember, I, I don't think the first time I read the issue, like when I bought it, I don't think I thought much of it because I was still like, this is cool. The art is cool because that bone part is oh, in that God, scene, like a page before. That, a bro, when he, that's what I mean. The duality of the violence. Where that's in crazy, insane, awesome. The previous issue right. where Ares punches a dude's face into so a hard. that it explodes. <laughs> like that's awesome. And, but then you could also have a moment where a kid is traumatized by serious real violence or, or, and, and yeah. loses his innocence, but then also be incredibly entertaining. Like Jason Aaron, yes. this one he was just dude, he was fucking cooking, man. He was in the kitchen. He was cooking. Like this he had is, some, I, math, he had some fucking yeah. math. Both these here. books I think are I'm glad that you thought of me, and we're like, oh yeah, Jake would be in. Well, these. we talked about uh, doing comics again, and I was like, honestly, I just I don't want to start a th- another thing with like uh, we had with Ma'am because I just we didn't yeah. have time for it, and it was fun. Um, but you know, I think the best thing we can do for now um, is you know I have these like series or these arcs. Um, another one we're gonna do is the Avengers Assemble uh, Omega, Alpha and Omega. You know what? No. Arc. You know what? Next one we're gonna do would be. I'll find a DC book. We'll we'll do Defenders Beyond after we finish. Defenders. Well, I want to do a DC book because I'm tired of doing all just Marvel. Do you have all the issues so we can trade them and stuff? Do you have trade paperbacks? Because that's boring. <laughs> oh well. That's why I thought we could do one issue a week and stuff. <sighs> trade paperbacks. You're just gonna flip to the next. Issues. I mean, we don't just have to do Marvel books. Is all I'm no, I'm I'm just saying. As soon as DC comes out with a book that captures my attention, like these ones have, <laughs> what? eat shit! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Love Shopping with Jake and Tyler. 